The love stories of the princess marrying a commoner are so romantic in the movies, but what about in the real life? Today, we're going to talk about a real crime case about a married couple who came from totally different family conditions. The husband's name is Dong Gang Biao. He was born in 1973 and raised up all by her mother. Liu Xu Ying, Dong's mother, dropped out of primary school. She gave birth to three children with two husbands in her hometown of Shanxi. After divorcing her second husband, Liu Xuying left Shanxi and married for the third time in Shandong, giving birth to her fourth child, Dong Gangbiao. But soon, her third marriage also ended, and Liu had not remarried since then, and put all her heart into raising her youngest son, Dong. Liu had no savings, no place to live, and no support from relatives or friends. She took her son with great difficulties to live in a village. Although they were poor, Liu pulled out all the stops to support her son's studies. Dong did not disappoint his mother. He studied hard and graduated with a master degree, then he became a teacher in a college. Later, his mother Liu came from Shandong to Changshu, where Dong was working and lived with her son in the staff dorm offered by the college. At an event held by the college, Dong met Xu Yili. Xu Yili was born in Changzhou in 1979. She was the only child from a wealthy family, and her parents were both professors from the university. In 2005, Xu became a teacher at the same college as Dong after Xu got her doctorate degree. Dong and Xu fell in love very quickly and got married in 2007. In fact, Xu's parents did not approve of their relationship after learning about Dong's family background. Xu's family was rich, and her parents had poured all their love into her, but Xu married to Dong anyway. Xu's parents then accepted it and provided a lot of money for the new couple. After the two married, Dong moved into Xu's dorm, while Dong's mother, Liu, then lived alone in Dong's dorm. That was the only period that the couple were happy living together. However, within a few days, Liu was unwilling to live alone in Dong's dorm and requested to live with his son and daughter-in-law. Although unwilling, Xu still agreed and bought a simple twin bed to put in the living room for Liu to sleep. On Liu's first night at their place, something unexpected happened. Liu refused to sleep alone on the bed in the living room and insisted on moving the twin bed into the bedroom of her son and daughter-in-law, placing it next to the bed of the couple. Although Xu extremely disliked her way, Xu didn't want to have a conflict with her mother-in-law, so she asked Dong to negotiate. During Dong's growth, Liu was very strict and did not allow her son to have any rebellion against him. Although his wife was very upset, Dong still didn't reject her mother. In the end, Xu had no choice but to fall asleep in frustration. Xu later told her parents about this matter, and they both thought it was very absurd. Due to differences in family background and lifestyle habits, this displeasure was just the beginning. Liu, who had been poor all her life, felt very upset about the way her daughter-in-law spent money. Liu even had reached the point that she couldn't stand the couple paying for water bills. So she turned down the taps to the minimum flowing, and water drops dripped down one by one so that the water supply company wouldn't detect the water was running. So in this way, they didn't need to pay for the water bills. Liu kept the dripped water in containers so that there were many containers filled with water on the floor. At that time, Xu, who was pregnant, had poor sleep and found it even more difficult to fall asleep every night by listening to the ticking sound of water. After multiple unsuccessful communications with Liu, she once again asked her husband Dong to solve the problem. But Dong remained submissive and dared not disobey his mother. In October 2007, on a night when Xu was four months pregnant, she got up to go to the bathroom when she tripped over a water container on the floor. Fortunately, she was taken to the hospital in time and she and the baby were fine. Even if such an accident occurred, Liu still went her own way. In Liu's concept, as a wife, Xu needed to do all the household chores. Liu believed that Xu's mother did not teach Xu well. She once told Dong that their home was such a mess 
and Xu's mother didn't even talk to her daughter to clean the apartment. Even so, Xu's parents were still very nice to Liu, hoping to help ease the relationship between their daughter and Liu. In the autumn of 2007, Xu's parents took Liu on a trip with them and bought her some clothes, shoes and presbyopia glasses as gifts. Considering that she was from Shangxi, they often took her to have Shangxi food. Liu had an eye disease, but she had never been willing to spend money on treatment herself. Zhu's parents took her to the hospital multiple times for treatment and completely cured her. For the kindness of Xu's parents, Liu once expressed, I don't know how to repay you for being so kind to me. I have nothing, and I will repay you in the next life. Although Liu expressed gratitude, she never treated Xu well. Xu's life was still difficult. Later, Xu's parents took out a down payment of 100,000 yuan to buy a new apartment for the young couple, hoping that they would live alone. However, Liu still refused to live alone and insisted on moving into the new home of the couple. Not only that, but she also asked her eldest son to move into the garage that came along with the new apartment, so the car bought by Xu's parents for the young couple could only be parked outdoors. We can imagine there must be a lot of conflicts between them living under the same roof. In March 2008, Xu gave birth to a son. After the maternity leave ended, Liu said she was too old to take care of the baby, so Xu sent the child to her parents on weekdays. However, the arrival of the child did not ease the conflict between them. At this time, Dong also lost his patience and blamed Xu for all the conflicts between his mother and wife, repeatedly committing domestic violence against Xu. But in front of Xu's parents, Dong put on a different face. He wept bitterly and regretted his behavior, promising not to do this to Xu again. However, Xu didn't trust him anymore and was no longer arguing with Liu, but trying to avoid her. She left early and returned late every day. When Dong was on a business trip, she stayed in a hotel at a friend's house in an office, and even in a car. Xu was ready to leave Gang and was looking for a new apartment. In October, Xu officially filed for divorce with Dong. Knowing that Xu had proposed a divorce, Liu couldn't bear it anymore. Less than a month after Xu filed for divorce, Liu went to the gas station to buy gasoline. According to Liu's later confession, for some unknown reason, the staff at the gas station refused to sell her gasoline. She spent 400 yuan asking passers-by to buy 50 yuan of gasoline for her. On November 25th, 2010, Xu was in a good mood because she found an apartment and intended to buy it. She was looking forward to the life after divorce. The next day, on November 26th, Xu was going to take a test from college. Although Dong was on a business trip, she decided to go home and only stayed for one night to prepare for the test. Xu locked herself in her room as soon as she returned home at night. Suddenly, the room got dark. The lights went out. Xu quickly realized that her mother-in-law outside the door had done the same trick again. Liu often used the excuse of cutting down electricity bills to turn off the power switch when Dong was not at home, and only Xu was. So Xu just stayed in the bedroom, texting and complaining to her good friend. On November 26, 2010, Xu got up early to continue preparing for exams and made an appointment with her colleagues to meet at school at noon. However, her colleagues were unable to see her again. At around 11 a.m., Liu walked out of the building and came to a small restaurant for lunch. Around two o'clock in the afternoon, Liu walked into the police station and calmly said, I killed my daughter-in-law. When the police saw the old lady's sanity and realized that what she said was true, they immediately took Liu into custody. The first detective to arrive at the scene of the crime saw a woman wearing a pink woolen coat and brown boots lying in a pool of blood on the living room floor. There was a sharp knife about 20 centimeters long. In addition to the pungent bloody smell, there was also a strong gasoline smell. The forensic doctor authenticated the deceased shoe was stabbed and hacked with a sharp knife 12 times, resulting in massive blood loss and death. 
The forensic doctor noticed that the neck and head of the deceased were almost completely separated, leaving only a layer of skin connected. Later, the reporter went to interview Liu, and she said she regretted so badly, but we couldn't see any guilt on her face. <laughs> Moreover, although Liu admitted the crime fact, she always insisted that she had a good relationship with Xu and that the killing was caused by Xu's mother's interference. Who would believe such an explanation? Afterwards, Dong inherited the property left by Xu and got married again in 2016. Liu applied for medical parole due to advanced cancer and was released from prison after serving two years in prison.